Hey everybody, my dear friends, I have discussed in my first video about criteria for classification of an enterprise as micro, small or medium enterprise. Also I discussed benefit of getting Udyam registration. Further, important points of Udyam scheme were also discussed in my first video. Link for the first video is given here so that you can view the same by clicking on the link. Now, in this video, I am going to discuss with you how to calculate investment in plant and machinery for getting Udyam registration. Also, how to calculate turnover. What shall be the mandatory condition for getting Udyam registration? What is the procedure of getting Udyam registration and how your grievances shall be redressed and many more things in detail thereof. Keep watching this video till end in order to understand each and every nitty gritty about Udyam registration. Now the Udyam registration shall be linked with your PAN and GSTN also. Very important development under new registration scheme. Another important condition which has been provided by notification dated 26 June 2020 is that now you can get only one Udyam registration against one PAN number that is your permanent account number issued by the income tax department. There was no restriction for one PAN and one registration under MSMED Act under old scheme of registration. But this has completely been changed now under new scheme of registration. Now there is a condition of one PAN and one Udyam registration. If you are having multiple units but the PAN is same then you will get only one Udyam registration. Now say for instance if you are having ABC enterprises which is having say five manufacturing units and one service unit at different places then you will get only one Udyam registration certificate against this pan of your organization and all the address of five manufacturing units and one service unit shall be mentioned on your Udyam registration. Hence no multiple Udyam registration now under new scheme of registration to have a better control by MSME ministry over it. And now my dear friends I will discuss with you how to calculate investment in plant and machinery or equipment. Now the investment in your plant and machinery or equipment will be linked with your income tax return filed under the income tax act. Now the question will be coming to your mind that what will happen in case of a newly established enterprises who have not filed its income tax return so far. This aspect has also been taken care of. The facility has been given to make self declaration by new enterprises till March 31st of the financial year in which the income tax return is filed. In case of a new enterprise, MSME ministry shall rely upon its self-declaration till March 31st of the financial year in which it files its income tax return. Now the question will be coming to your mind that what will be treated as plant and machinery for this purposes. Plant and machinery shall be having the same meaning as it is assigned to it under the income tax rules 1962 for classifying plant and machinery. So whatever you have classified as plant and machinery under the income tax rules in the schedule of fixed assets which is filed with your income tax return shall be taken as your investment in plant and machinery for granting Udyam registration certificate. MSME ministry will automatically take from income tax side the figures of your investment in plant and machinery from your income tax return. So 
it will be linked to your income tax return. Chances of manipulation in the figure of investment in plant and machinery are the things of past now under new scheme. My dear friends, plant and machinery will include all the tangible assets of your enterprise. Yes, tangible assets and not intangible assets other than land, building and furniture and fixtures. So whatever you have classified as plant and machinery provided under the income tax rule 1962 and you have filed along with your income tax return that will be treated as investment in plant and machinery or equipment for the purposes of calculation of investment under MSMED Act for the purposes of grant of Odium registration. Now, the inclusion of any item under plant and machinery has been made specific and it shall not be prone to litigation or a different interpretation by different persons. It is a, a straight jacket formula that whatever you have treated plant and machinery as per the income tax rules in your income tax return that will be treated as plant and machinery other than land, building and furniture and fittings for the purposes of calculating investment in plant and machinery under MSME Act for classification of your enterprise as micro, small or medium enterprise. In case of a new enterprise where MSME ministry could not verify investment figure into plant and machinery with an enterprise income tax return because it has not filed its income tax return so far then the purchase price or the invoice value of the plant and machinery or equipment for both types of plant and machinery whether it is new or second hand will be taken and considered for the purposes of investment into plant and machinery and that figure an enterprise should declare into its self declaration. However, enterprise has to reduce the amount of GST from this purchase price or the invoice value of plant and machinery. Therefore, in case of a new enterprise the value of plant and machinery, whether it is new or second hand, will be taken as its purchase or invoice value, out of which the GST amount will be reduced. My dear friends, the rationale behind excluding the GST amount from the purchase price of plant and machinery is that the enterprise get the input tax credit under GST for the GST amount charged on the invoice of plant and machinery whether it is old or new, if it is used for the purposes of business. Therefore, whatever input tax credit an enterprise have got as set off under GST, then that will not be taken into account for the purposes of calculating the investment in plant and machinery or equipment of a new enterprise. Please note that for the purpose of calculation of an enterprise investment, in plant and machinery, it has to still exclude the plant and machinery as per explanation given in section 7 of the MSMED Act 2006 because that exclusion is still existing and has not been removed. So those items which are provided in the explanation to section 7 of the MSMED Act 2006 has to be excluded while calculating the investment in plant and machinery. Those items which are to be excluded are cost of pollution control, research and development, industrial safety devices and such other items as may be specified by notification. These are to be excluded as per the explanation to section 7 of the MSMED Act 2006. So these three specific items are still to be excluded from the value of investment in plant and in machinery while determining whether an enterprise is a micro or a small or medium enterprise. Now, the question will be coming into your mind that how you will calculate your turnover. There are two important things that have been done 
by the MSME Ministry for calculating turnover. That is, export turnover is to be excluded from enterprise turnover. It means that the export turnover is to be excluded from the turnover limit of rupees 5 crore for micro enterprises or from rupees 50 crore for a small enterprises or from rupees 250 crore for medium enterprises. This limit is to be taken after deducting enterprise export turnover from its total turnover figure. This was the long standing demand of the MSME industry which has been fulfilled by MSME ministry now. After incorporating the same, this into notification dated 26 June 2020. This is a welcome step. Please note that in any case, MSME ministry shall be verifying your self-declared turnover figure from your income tax and GST return and your turnover shall be linked to the turnover declared by you under income tax and GST. So in case you are not having your PAN and GST number, then you can declare your turnover up to 31st March 2021 on self-declaration basis. However, after March 31st 2021, the turnover has to be mandatorily as per your PAN and GST IN, meaning thereby that MSME ministry will cross verify your self-declared turnover with the turnover you have declared in your income tax and GST return. So be very clear that after my 31st 2021, if you are not having the PAN and GST and number, then you will not get the Udyam registration because post my 31st 2021, both PAN and GST and number shall be mandatory. The new procedure of Udyam registration has been made effective from 1st of July 2020 and you can get your registration immediately based upon the same on declaration basis. Now I will share with you the process of Udyam registration. For registration, you have to log in on the website udyamregistration.gov.in you need not to pay any fee for registration. However, you will be required the Aadhaar number that is mandatory even now. Aadhaar number of the proprietor in case of a proprietorship firm, of the managing partner in case of a partnership firm. However, in case of a private limited or limited company or LLP or trust or society or cooperative society, the Aadhaar number of any authorized official will be required who is authorized to apply for Udyam registration for getting the same. Now, under one Udyam registration, you can have as many manufacturing or service activity as you like. And unlike in the past where you used to have separate registration for each manufacturing or service activity, this is a big relief as far as the registration is concerned for MSMEs. Now, the question will be coming to your mind that if you are already registered with the MSME ministry and you are having EM part 2 that is Entrepreneur's Memorandum or UAM that is Udyog Aadhar Memorandum, then whether still you are also required to take the fresh Udyam registration. Now, existing enterprises having either EM part 2 or UAM have to compulsorily get the Udyam registration after 1st July 2020. This is very important for all the existing enterprises who are already having either EM part 2 or UAM. Even those enterprises have to get the fresh Udyam registration after 1st July 2020 but on or before March 31st, 2021. Please note that in any case, all existing enterprises have to obtain new Udyam registration on or before March 31st, 2021. Hence, your existing MSME registration is valid 
only up to 31st March 2021. And if existing MSME registration holders do not get the new Udyam registration on or before March 31st 2021, then they will lose all the benefits which are available to MSME under MSME D Act 2006. One more important thing is to be noted that in case you do not get your new Udyam registration on or before 31st March 2021, then your status as MSME will stand suspended and accordingly all the benefits of MSME will be lost. Earlier, if you upgrade from micro to a small category or from a small to medium category or you become so big based upon the investment and turnover criteria that you go out from medium category, even then the benefit under MSME was available for three years from the date you upgrade to upper category. However, notification dated 26 June 2020 has put a limit of one year in case of upgradation from one category to another category, meaning thereby that in case of upward upgradation, an enterprise will maintain its prevailing status till expiry of one year from the close of the year of registration. Now only one year of the close of the year from the expiry of registration in which you have upgraded to next category, the MSME benefit will be available. That is only for one year in place of three years. We discussed about upgradation of an enterprise, but there may be a reverse case also. Like an enterprise may become from medium enterprise to a small enterprise or from a small enterprise, it may become micro enterprise. This will be a case of reverse gradation and in this case enterprise will continue in its present category till the closure of the financial year and the benefit of the change status will only be available with effect from 1st April of the financial year following the year in which such change took place. It means the benefit of change status will be available from the next year 1st April and not immediately to that enterprises. Also, a champion portal has been made by the Ministry of MSME for redressal of your various grievances. This is a one-stop window where all your grievances will be redressed. Also, your district industry center that is DIC will also act as a single window facilitation service center for you for redressal of your grievances. So what are you waiting for? Just log on to the website and get your Udyam registration in order to keep availing all the benefits available to the MSMEs under MSME D Act 2006. Keep watching this space for more videos of your interest shortly. Stay safe and healthy. Bye.